Ladies and gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, meine Damen und Herren, Bayanlar ve Baylar, it's time for another episode where I test the most important aspects. In this case, is the newly updated 2024 Mercedes EQA. Welcome to It's Only Electric. We're going to test range, consumption, acceleration, 0 to 100, 0 to 60, cabin noise, and charging. How fast will it charge and how long will it take? Let's start with some facts and especially have a look at the actual updates. This is the 250 plus, meaning that it's driving on the front wheels only. This is the car with the longest range, so up to 560 kilometers of WLTP range. This one with the extra equipped 19 inch wheels delivers 520 kilometers instead. So around 40 kilometers of range loss due to bigger wheels. Tires, Bridgestone Turanza 235.50 all around, so a non-staggered setup. Delivering 190 horsepower, the drive unit here in the front, 140 kilowatts, 385 newton meters of torque. Does zero to 100 in 8.6 seconds and has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. So to the most obvious change and update for the 2024 model, and that's the frontal face of the EQA. New grille updated in this case with all the small Mercedes stars and the big logo at the center fully closed. This one is running the AMG package. So as you see, some more accents and air ventilations to make it look a bit more sporty. Another slight update is the taillights with updated optics inside. Looks better, a bit more modern, but to one important change, and that's actually the battery pack, the battery capacity has gone from 68.5 to 70.5 in the net capacity. That's actually a four kilowatt hour boost. And that's the main reason for the added range of around 50 kilometers. So 520 kilometers of WTP range with this rims. Will we be able to achieve that? Let's see, I mean, 15 degrees outside, good weather conditions, a bit windy, but totally dry roads. So a exciting moment for sure. Another information that's good to know is the charge speed is a bit disappointing. 100 kilowatts of DC charging, fast charging, hopefully a very flat curve. Hopefully it will keep the speed very long, but we will see how long will it take to charge it from 10 to 80%. That's in the end of this video. Home charging, 11 kilowatts, three phase support. Nothing strange. Let's start with the range and consumption test. So the first section of the range and consumption test, uh, the total stretch is 80 kilometers long with a mix speed of 93 kilometers per hour. So speeds between 50 all the way up to 110 kilometers, currently 100 kilometers per hour. So I always stick to a certain set of rules to be able to get a comparable results between all the cars I test. And rule number one, always keep the AC at auto and 20 degrees Celsius, as you see. Rule number two, always drive the car in eco mode if available. And eco mode is selected and active. Third rule, always stick to the speed limits. So now it's increasing to 110 kilometers per hour. Have been driven nine, 10 kilometers, Average consumption until now, 17.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So 17.8, really nice feature. It automatically increased the speed I'm driving on. The drive assist function keeps me in the lane. Fairly stable, a bit wobbly, but still good, I think. Another nice thing is that it doesn't disengage the drive assist function when changing lane, when switching lane, as soon, as long as you use your blinker and signal when switching the lane, you're all fine. It keeps the lane assist function active all the time. Very convenient and good system, I must say. And the drive assist package that uh, I'm talking about now is not standard on all variants. So for this 250 plus, it's actually extra and it's called driver assist pack or something like that. And it's an add-on. Uh, I think it's included in the AMG line advanced package in this case for the EQA. But I really recommend that uh, extra add-on because it 
gives you a lot of extra comfort on longer trips. So let's test the European speed limit warning, the mandatory one. I always do that in all my videos to show you how easy or how hard it is to turn it off. So the current speed limit is 80 km per hour. Let's just drive a bit too fast, like 82, 83, and see if it starts beeping, because now the system is active. And it's always active by default. Come on, start blinking. Three beeps. And it will continue remind me as long as I hold the speed over the speed limit. But there's a very easy way to turn that off. Mercedes has actually put a shortcut on the main screen in the upper left corner. So the only thing you do without the need of digging around in the menus, etc., you just press that icon. It's a speed limit icon with a speaker. You press it and it mutes that function. So now it's actually muted. Unmuted, muted. So very easy, very convenient. Um, good implementation. I haven't found a specific way of doing it on the steering wheel because there's a lot of buttons here. Uh, of course, I can navigate to it with the joystick here on the, on the top left, on the top right corner of the steering wheel. So I can uh, navigate to that icon and press OK. And that way, without reaching out for the screen, using the steering wheel instead. So you can indirectly use the steering wheel to deactivate and activate the function but most of the time I feel it's more convenient just to reach out and press it manually that goes a lot faster than trying to toggle to that specific icon. Traveled 27 kilometers average consumption until now has actually been going down 15.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and it's actually 19 degrees outside that's amazing I mean it has been so cold for a while now all winter and now finally we are hitting and getting some warmer weather here in Sweden in Stockholm so the spring is really here and I feel great about that I will not miss the winter not a ounce so soon hitting the halfway 40 kilometers past average consumption 14.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that's a good consumption that's very low uh, after the halfway so that's that's impressive I mean it's a front-wheel drive car with only 190 HP uh, so not that powerful fairly small motor here at the front but still good results very soon passing the most beautiful part of this range test on this track that's between the two lakes very nice place especially uh, during this time of the year people out fishing really nice so I will soon wrap up the range and consumption test we'll just finalize the trip so let's summarize the range and consumption test the final consumption ended up at 15.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that equals to a full range of 100% of the better pack of 461 kilometers compared to the WLTP range of 520 kilometers that's 89% so that's fairly good I mean um, that's what you can expect during good summary conditions and uh, yeah 89% 461 kilometers a fairly low consumption Let's move on to the cabin noise. And I always measure cabin noise in different speeds, 50, 70, 90, and 110 kilometers per hour. And this is the final result. I always place the microphone at head height of the passenger in the front. So to be able to be as consistent as possible. This car doesn't have a glass roof, so that lowers the, the internal noise of the cabin. And it doesn't have, um, acoustic glass or double pane windows so 
no extra insulations still a fairly silent car to put this into a perspective we can compare it with other cars in the segment it's a bit more silent than the recently tested volvo ex30 also more silent than the byd dolphin it's on par or a bit more noisy than the honda e ni1 around the same ballpark as the volvo xc40 and also the Cupra Born or Volkswagen ID3. And when it comes to the acceleration, I did a couple of runs and the best possible time I achieved was zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.3 seconds, zero to 60 miles per hour in 7.9 seconds. That's actually better than the specified time of 8.6 seconds, zero to 100 kilometers per hour. So <coughs> beating the specified time by 0.3 seconds, I mean, that's good. Dry roads, good conditions, state of charge, 95%. Let's move on to the most important aspect, the final test, and that's the charging. So now I'm trying to drain the battery pack down to 10%. Current state of charge, 27%. I'm getting ready for a charge session, 10 to 80%, uh, but I need to start from 10. So 27 down to 10 will take uh, a while. At the same time, I am warming up the battery pack with the preheating functionality or preconditioning function. Uh, I activate that by navigating to a certain quick charger, fast charger, and it has actually been going up from 30 kilowatts, currently 66 kilowatt of charge speed of peak peak charge speed, and I have been driving for 15 minutes. So that's not that bad. It's four and a half degrees outside today. And this is another day. Uh, I wasn't able to, to finalize all the tests during the same day. So today it's raining and it's a lot colder. I mean, that's good because it's a better test for, uh, for a charging actually and preheating. Finally here at the charge station. And I, as you saw, warmed up the battery pack with the preheat and functionality. So 15 minutes of preheating took the battery to a ready state for maximum charge speed and it's five or four and a half five degrees celsius outside so the battery pack was fairly cold because the car had been standing over the night so i think that's a impressive rate of heating of the battery pack but keep in mind that the top charge speed of 100 kilowatts is not that impressive so the cell temperature is probably not over 30 degrees I think it's probably a bit lower because I don't believe that it takes that short amount of time to heat up the battery pack. A lot of mass that needs to be to be heated up. So the lower charge speed, charge rate actually doesn't need that high of a cell temperature. But still very good to see that there is a preconditioning function and that it heats up the battery fairly fast and that it works good. And when it comes to charge speeds, this is the final result, the final charge curve. It started uh, around 90 kilowatts from 10% and achieved peak speed of 102 kilowatts, actually a bit faster than the specified 100 was around 30% or just above 30%. And it is a very flat curve, as you see, and the tap ring starts very slowly at around 45%. And there is a slow tapper all the way down until the end. And at 50%, it's charged at 88 kilowatts. So at 60%, the charge rate was around 84, 85 kilowatts. And at the end, at 80 percent 65 kilowatts so a fairly flat charge curve so the total charge time was impressive uh, or at least better than i thought when seeing the the top speed and have read the specifications from mercedes uh, so 10 to 80 percent took 36 minutes and 41 seconds and that's actually not that bad as i thought from the beginning so it keeps a good pace all the way into 80 percent it can be considered fairly good despite having that low peak charge speed so what do you think is the changes good enough to keep this car competitive on the market currently i don't know but please share your thoughts in the comments below and as i always say subscribe like and engage very important for me to help me keep going thank you for watching 
Speak to you soon.